Okay, this is Damian McNamara, Global Medical News Network at the Skin Disease Education Foundation Women's and Pediatric Dermatology Seminar in San Francisco. And with me is Dr. Jeffrey P. Callen of the University of Louisville in Kentucky. Uh, my first question is, um, how did you learn about the growing connection between insulin resistance and acanthosis nigricans that you're talking about during your presentation? Uh, and it was clear that there were patients who had uh, acanthosis nigricans that was seemingly not related to any measurable endocrinopathy other than their being overweight. And at that time, in the mid-70s, it was called pseudoacanthosis nigricans. Uh, subsequently, it's been recognized that uh, most of the patients who had that entity would uh, also uh, be, when tested, would be able to demonstrate that they had insulin resistance. And so probably their insulin resistance was also related to, the, to a reason for them being obese. Uh, and then on top of it, it uh, allowed them to get acanthosis nigricans. So is this connection widely known among dermatologists? Um, well, let's see, I, I've been talking about it for probably the last four or five years, so I, I would hope so, you know, at the number of meetings I go to. But um, I think it sometimes is a very subtle finding when you're doing an examination, uh, particularly in, uh, in the, the uh, uh, case that I was going to use to introduce the subject was a young woman who was uh, being seen for acne. Uh, who's overweight. Uh, she has really had no uh, menstrual irregularities, uh, but she probably does have polycystic over ovarian syndrome, which is also related to the uh, presence of insulin resistance. And, um, and basically the reason that we were alerted to the fact that she was probably insulin resistant uh, was that in doing her complete examination, we noticed a, a velvety discoloration on the back of her neck in a folded area of the skin and so made the diagnosis of acanthosis nigricans, alerted her physician that this was a, uh, a possibility, she was tested. I don't think that we as dermatologists though are going to be treating the patients. I think we're going to alert the patient and the family and then uh, alert the uh, primary care providers, uh, either whether it's a pediatrician or whether it's a adolescent medicine physician or an internist or family physician, uh, that they ought to uh, do the appropriate testing. Kind of your take-home message about this, what you would tell the dermatologist um, when looking for this. I mean, they're obviously going to see acanthogus nigricans. Maybe they would be the ones who see that, and then they would refer them possibly to someone else to manage the insulin resistance, is that true? It goes both ways? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, uh, somebody may, the patient may be sent because people, either they may come or they may be sent because they've noticed this hyperpigmentation in folded areas of the skin, whether the back of the neck, under the arms. Um, and then uh, uh, us making a appropriate diagnosis, which is a clinical diagnosis, you don't really need to do histopathology, and then alerting uh, uh, the physician to do the appropriate testing, including testing for insulin resistance, but for other endocrine disorders. This has been Damian McNamara with Global Medical News Network.